a lot of politicians will vote libertarian if they think that's how they remain politicians. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with Norm Singleton. He's the Vice President for Policy at the Campaign for Liberty. Uh, Norm, you were a longtime legislative aide to uh, Congressman Ron Paul. Ron Paul is also the, uh, the founder of Campaign for Liberty. Tell us what the organization's mission is. Campaign for Liberty is a 501c4, for those of you who don't obsess over the tax code, that basically means that we're a grassroots lobbying organization that works to put pressure on Congress and state and local governments to uh, support liberty. Our signature issues are audit the Fed. We have also been very involved in uh, fighting the Patriot Act, fighting the uh, Transportation Security Administration, um, opposing the national internet sales tax, and e-verify and national ID cards. And these are all um, extensions and kind of embellishments of the issues that uh, Ron Paul was interested in. How is the audit the Fed going? This is one of those things that is wildly popular. I mean, you know, 15 years ago, you couldn't even say, if you were talking about auditing the Fed, people would ask you to remove your tinfoil hat and leave quietly. Now, how many, I mean, the audit, uh, bills to audit the Fed have hundreds of sponsors or co-sponsors in Congress. What's going to happen with that? Well, we're hoping that this year we can, or this Congress rather, we could finally persuade Harry Reid to um, allow a Senate floor vote on audit the Fed. That was the problem. Um, last year, we did have a floor vote uh, in the House, and it passed fairly overwhelmingly and surprisingly bipartisan. Uh, but Reed has continued to block it. There might be a leverage point coming up next year or later this year when Bernanke, Ben Bernanke steps down as chairman and President Obama has uh, to fill that yeah. post, which could give us a leverage to force Reed to give us a vote. Uh, you know, some of the issues that Campaign for Liberty is, is involved in are things that are, you know, explicitly libertarian about uh, limiting the size, scope, and spending of government. I mean, all of them are. But what's interesting is that when you talk about things like, you know, uh, state surveillance, about e-verify or creating a national ID card, bringing the TSA, the Transportation Security Administration, to heel, these are issues that play very well across the political spectrum. Have you guys had much contact or uh, impact on either Democratic politicians or people on the left that normally don't suit up with the with libertarians. We have, I mean, we have members in all 50 states, and we have members in uh, various congressional districts. And uh, there are Democrats um, who are good on civil liberties issues, like Ron Wyden, mm -hmm. uh, who we are um, willing to work with. There are Democrats who are good on audit the Fed. I mean, even uh, Bernie Sanders, the socialist, has some interest in at least Federal Reserve transparency. Uh, so, and we're willing to work with uh, people on single issue coalitions uh, across the board. Um, some surprising coalitions on, for example, um, farm, agriculture farm uh, policy, you find uh, greenies who you wouldn't think that someone like me would be uh, in the same room with, but for different, for maybe for different reasons, we both support um, ending um, subsidies to big to big ag. Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act is, you know, starting the enrollment period is going to start on October 1st. What are you guys doing to combat that? We are, have uh, alerted our members to support defunding Obamacare. Um, right now that looks like a very, very uphill climb, but we're hopeful that at least by putting pressure on Congress to do something that there will be something coming up like a delay of Obamacare, which perhaps some red state Democrats may be interested in supporting. Uh, you know, you obviously you were in Congress or you worked uh, in a congressional office for years. We're already, we're a month away from the, uh, you know, end of a fiscal year we, which didn't have a budget. We've got no possibility of a budget for the next year. So what has to happen for the budget process to get back into, uh, into working shape again? One thing might be the government just is too big and it's too unwieldy and with all the moving parts, all the special interests, it's just not feasible to expect Congress to pass 13 appropriation bills. Maybe we should 
try to whittle it down to where there's only six, ten appropriation bills. I mean, I, I'd like to see one very small appropriation yeah. bill passed, but uh, since we're not going to get there soon, maybe that might be be the problem. Um, it would be nice in terms of being able to have more ef effect on actual policy to get back to the days when Congress spent the summer, both bodies passing 13 appropriation bills. They went to conference committee in the fall and then they passed each one, one at a time because that, that would allow for a process where individual members, congressmen, senators uh, could actually influence the process and maybe we could get some reductions in spending. Is that, a, is that a lack of leadership on the part of the Democrats and the Republicans or is it the president's fault that they are not being held accountable to do? I mean the most basic function of government which is to say how much money you're going to spend. I think, it, I think at first it was just the uh, just a result of the sort of weird, dyna weird uh, partisan dynamic that uh, led to these uh, yearly showdowns between the president and Congress and it somehow over time just became standard operating procedure. It's, it's weird. No, nobody on either side, in either party, in either branch actually seems to think there's anything dysfunctional now about waiting till the fall to talk about next year's budget and then waiting till three weeks before Christmas before starting to write a gigantic um, omnibus budget or large CR uh, to be voted on the week before Christmas. Well, I guess it's a good time to give gifts, right, if nothing else. And uh, that seems to be what Congress <laughs> is mostly involved in. Uh, you know, a couple people, as a final question, uh, a number of people have been talking about how there's a libertarian moment going on. Uh, you know, and certainly it seems for the first time you've been in this business for a long time, you have people like Rand Paul, you have Mike Lee, you have people like Justin Amash and Thomas Massey, a number of Republicans at least who are calling themselves libertarians. Um, are we in a uh, libertarian moment? And uh, if so, what, what needs to happen next to really lock in any meaningful reduction in the size, scope, and spending of government? We're either in a libertarian moment or, or we're just at the, at the tipping point to, uh, to get to a libertarian moment. Right now, we are uh, we, you know, with, with Senator Paul and uh, Congressman Amash and Congressman Massey. They're obviously, they're providing great leadership in the House. Uh, our institutions seem to be flourishing as uh, never before. Clearly, the only political, with the, with the uh, collapse of mainstream um, conservative ideologies, support among the young people and the continuing disillusionment that the Obama that the Obama youth of 2008 and 2000 even 2012 are having libertarianism is the only political philosophy that seems to have any type of appeal among young people um, as Congressman Paul says what needs to be done is continuing to so for those of us who aren't directly in politics is to spread the message and work to mobilize people to keep putting pressure on our politicians um, to move in the direction towards Paul and, and Massey and Amash um, because a lot of politicians will vote libertarian if they think that's how they remain politicians. Um, I hate to break it to you, Nick, but sometimes people in office of both parties do just vote because they think that's the popular way to vote. Campaign for Liberty is participating in a big uh, libertarian uh, kind of hootenanny coming up. Tell us about LPAC and where we can get more information about it. LPAC 2013 will be September 19th through the 21st at the Westfield Marriott in Chantilly, Virginia. You can get information at our website, campaignforliberty.com. Among the speakers will be both Dr. Pauls, Congressman Amash, Congressman Massey. All right. Well, thank you very much. I want to uh, thank Norm Singleton. He's a vice president for policy at Campaign for Liberty for talking with Reason TV today. Thank you, Norm. Thank you. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.